Hey everybody. Uh, so today I'm back out with Kate and Alice again. And this time I wanted to show y'all something a little different to keep the, you know, break up the monotony, keep it from getting boring. Uh, what we're doing today is we're actually ground skidding with tongs and grabs and I'm working them to one line. Uh, we've got a group of three trees here that we cut the other day. Uh, we got the rest of this sweet gum here to work. Uh, We've already skidded out this little pin oak, and then we've got two, I don't know if y'all can see it, but right up under there, we've got two more uh, <clears throat> sweet gum ties we got to get out. And this sweet gum, y'all, it's mainly just cross ties, what we're using it for. Uh, but I will take a moment and just tell you that working them to, ground skidding them is harder than working to a cart. It just pulls a little harder on them. And it's hot today. We're all getting tired already. <laughs> we got about a half a load on the truck right now. Uh, but it's definitely harder on them. And with these longer skids, it's even worse. But I wanted to take time to show y'all about ground skidding and uh, kind of how we do it. All right, Kate, okay. Alice. Gotta give them a break, y'all. Let them blow a little bit. Like I say, it's harder. This is harder doing, harder going, pulling it on the ground. Now, I could go get my log cart and make this a whole lot easier on everybody. But I did want to show y'all how we do this. And this is really handy when you're short to the, when you're close to the truck. Because you ain't got to worry about backing the cart up and getting turned around and all that kind of stuff. You can just, you know, walk the mules over the log, hook the tongs, and go. And if you're right close to the truck, it's really, really handy. But if y'all look over yonder, our truck's over there, it's probably, from where we're skidding from, it's about 100 yards. It's a pretty good little drag. <clears throat> These longer drags is good for good, good for young mules though, cause uh, it'll help them learn wool and how to stand still when you ask them to. All right, okay, Alice. Sometimes, y'all, y'all, depending on the size of the log, I might not go but 10 or 15 feet and then give them a break. Them big butt cuts we got on the truck now, we didn't go very far with them before we let them have a break. You know, and it's hot too, so you gotta take everything into consideration. All right, Kate. Okay. Kate. y'all probably never whoa probably never seen this one line thing and uh i've got a video that i'll put down in the description where y'all can go and watch it and i explain the one line completely but come around in front marcy on this one line deal it's pretty simple come up here a little closer where they can see on this one line deal it's pretty simple. I'm driving the lead mule cage. Alice is on the bearing stick and tied back right here. Can y'all see that? I've got her tied back and got her out here on the bearing stick. I'm mainly driving Kate, which she's got a G-string on. This is called G-string. 
and then I've got my one line hooked into this side of her bit. Now, on one line, a steady pull gets them to go haw, a little pop like that gets them to go gee. That's how you drive them with one line. And like I say, I'll put that video in the description. Y'all can go back and watch that with my Mary Ruth that I broke to drive and uh, broke her to one line. And uh, I, I covered the whole deal of one line real thorough in that video. Only difference here is, is I'm working two. And when you're working two, you gotta have a bearing stick and you gotta have a hold back. Oh, you can't tell it right here where we're at from the camera i'm sure but it gets pretty steep it's kind of a uphill and around a curve to the truck uh coming out of this bottom right here it's a pretty good little pull for them so we ain't gonna go very far let them take a break go a little bit take a break you know maybe 10 or 15 feet the cart would make it a lot easier <laughs> there's no doubt about it but th this handy being able to know how to do this and the mules know how to do it because times, there are times whenever skidding with a stretcher and a set of tongs is uh, is more productive than skidding with a cart. What I'm doing right now is not more productive because we got long skids. That's one thing you should use a cart for. And then two, uh, you know, it's hot and the timber's bigger uh, and it's uphill a little bit right here. So the cart would, would uh, definitely be more productive today. All right. Okay. All right. See, we didn't go, but maybe, maybe a log length, 10 or 12 feet. You know, we didn't carry it very far, and that's fine. As long as you get it on the truck, that's all that matters. You know, don't worry your animals slap out. It's hot. They're hot. I'm hot. You know, so uh, we just give everybody a break. Whoop. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Whoa. About one more pull, we'll be able to get it up there toward the, the truck. You little, you up, you little, yep, yep, you up, yep. All right. Whoa. Now, one good thing about this type of skidding, y'all, you can bunch what I call bunching. You can bunch with a set of tongs and the stretcher because see, I mean, you can just about get it on the forks. And the next one we drag up here, it'll it'll come right up beside it. You won't have to do much, very much rolling to get it over where it needs to go. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the trace chain. Now we don't have to worry about the about the uh, stretcher hitting them in the ankles. And we'll go ahead and roll this log over on the fork. And that way when we bring the next one up here, we'll, we'll have more room to get it right up here beside of it. Stay. Yep. It ain't gonna stay. There we go. Now when we bring the next one up here, with this, with the cart, you know, you got the wheelbase that's wide and the log would be like over here somewhere. But with the stretchers, and especially that swivel, it's downhill a little bit. So if we get it right up here just right, kind of bring the mules in just right, it'll roll right up beside it. I mean, be right there. You won't have to do hardly no rolling. And that's a good thing. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop.
What I did there, y'all, whoa. I set my tone just a little bit lower. <clears throat> That'll help give it just a little bit more lift. See how it's plowing this dirt? Come right here and look in front of this log. Come right down there and show them a close up, Mark. See how it's plowing that dirt ahead of it? So you don't have all that when you're doing it with a log cart, because a log cart picks the butt end of the log up out of the dirt. The more dirt you plow ahead of it, harder it is going to be able to pull. That's just common sense. <clears throat> All right, okay, now look. strategic when I give them a break right here they all we got a shade this is a good place for everybody you know so I try to be just a little bit strategic about where I give them a break at and sometimes you just got to give them a break right there where you at because they just they're huffing uh, but this is a good spot these doggone horse flies is aggravating too they've been tearing them up I've been killing as many of them as I could but it's still aggravating to them I know I don't blame them all right okay Now we got to start up that hill, so I'm gonna give them a break again. Now see y'all, if I was using the log cart, we wouldn't have to give all these breaks because it wouldn't be pulling them near as hard. You wouldn't be plowing dirt ahead of it. It'd get a little bit, you know, the more you, more of this log you can get up off the ground, the less friction you got too, you know, if that makes any sense. So it's just gonna pull easier all the way around with that log cart. But like I said, this is a valuable asset to a mule logger or a horse logger, and you need to know how to do this. And they need to know how to do it too. It's a little different technique for both, you know, and you kind of got to learn it. Setting these tongs is, man, it'll make you cuss if you ain't never used them a whole lot, because these tongs will slip off and it's just aggravating. But once you learn how to use them and you get them right, it's, it's pretty nice. You ain't got to worry about getting a chain under the log. You ain't got to worry about, you know, driving a grab or hammering a grab out. You can just set the tongs and roll on. The only bad thing about using a set of tongs, uh, like in this case, we can't take but one log. You know, and if you got little old small, say, 12-inch logs, like your uppercuts, you'd want to take at least two. Sometimes you'd even want to take three. Uh, and you can't do that with tongs. But... Let me show them these grabs up here, Marcy. Uh-oh. 
got them two. Uh, these are what we call here in Tennessee a set of head grabs. They're just a gra grabs with chain on them and they've got a ring in the center. Well, you could use this for two different things. You could drive a grab on in on each side of a big log and then hook in the center and pull off of that. Or you could drive one grab into it in one log, one grab into another log right beside it and hook in the ring and pull both of them. And you could get two logs at one time. And I just leave them hanging right there. And on this side, come around to the, this side and we'll, I'll show you this. All right, now this is my skip hammer. This is what I use to drive my grabs. And I just got it looped in here with a piece of baling twine. And uh, basically, you know, that's what I use to drive my grabs in. I use a pointed end to get them out. And when you ain't using it, you just come right here on your lead mule, hang it right there, and it stores out of the way. You a little bit. All right, now come up. Alex, take. got that one about right i'm trying to i'm trying to load them just a little heavy toward the front to get more weight on the front axle a little bit whoop yeah. a little bit whoop a little more whoop that's good now let's get this other one Mm, get it a little bit further forward too while I'm here. All right. All right. Whoa. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Whoa. way just a little bit to get it off them forks because it won't slide hardly on them forks. Need a little. Stand up. Whoa. Little bit, okay. I tell you what, that's good. Let's just let's just call that good right there. Whoa.
好，好，好，好，好，好，好，好，好，好，好，好，好，Y'all, I believe if it was flat ground and I didn't have to turn them and tweak them, I believe they'd about go on their own. Just about. Whoa. That up a little. Whoa. y'all well the video is getting a little long for now so i'm gonna go ahead and stop it here uh we do have some more footage of this load coming out and uh, i want to split it into two videos do like a part two to this one of uh, some hard to get to logs and how we got them out uh so y'all stay tuned for that i'll stop try to post that here in the next day or so also and uh just want to say thank you to my wife marcy for coming out and videoing for us and hanging out with us I really appreciate it. And also to all you guys that are watching and hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. Y'all take care and happy Labor Day.